Hello and welcome to day three or lesson three of the plant unit. Now I want you to know, even if I haven't said your names for a while, I still am thinking about all of you and I miss you and I like hearing about what you're doing and seeing some pictures. So I'm glad that you're still doing stuff with us. These are some of the funnest activities and I miss having you here with me. So today we are going to learn about different ways that seeds travel. Now, do you remember this poster that I showed you the very first day of all of these different seeds? And most of these seeds are planted in gardens by people. You buy the seeds at the store and then they plant them. But there are some other ways that seeds move from place to place. And the reason why it's important for seeds to move from place to place, because sometimes the place where they are is not a very good place for seeds to grow. Maybe there's not very much water, or there's not very much sun, or the soil's not very good. And another reason is because if all of the seeds fell, boom, just down on the ground from the tree or from the plant where they are in the fruit or the flower, remember that. Then um, that there, they, there would be too many. There wouldn't be enough nutrients in the soil for all the seeds and it would be fighting for the water and, and there would be too many plants so they would need to spread out in order to be more, uh, more strong and, and just have more resources available to them to grow. So I'm gonna show you some pictures of some different seeds and I want you to, to think about, I know you can't tell me, I want you to think about some ways that these seeds might travel from place to place. Now I talked about this one the other day when I was talking about it. This is a dandelion seed. And remember they start out as yellow flowers, then they grow up taller and they get these seeds on them that have this fluffy part. See this, each of those fluffy parts is a, is a seed. The seed's right in the middle of that. This, seed is found in the flower of the plant. And here's another one. This is the seeds from a maple tree. Both of these seeds travel the same way. So here is the little maple seed. Do you see that? And then it has this great big part that comes out that doesn't really help the seed at all to grow, but it does help it to travel. So looking at those two types of seeds, I want you to think about the best way that they could move around. Can you think about that? All right, so they move around using the wind. So this one has wings, and if you've ever taken a maple seed and dropped it, it goes whoo, 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 just like a helicopter. And if a breeze comes up, then it can take that seed to a different place and it can grow another maple tree further away from the first one where it can get more sunlight and more water. So that's why those seeds like to travel. And these, you, you know how to do those. You can blow on them and they travel all over. And your mom and dad might not be very happy about that because these are considered weeds, but they're super fun for kids. And I think that all of you have seen one growing in your yard at some time. So the, the one thing to know about seeds that travel by air is there's always a whole bunch of them. You notice how many? There's so many seeds uh, just on that one plant. Same thing here. Look at that big bunch. A maple tree does produces so many seeds. And the reason why is because the wind's a little bit unreliable. And as it takes the seeds, it might drop them anywhere. It might drop them in a place where it's not good to grow. Or they might drop them in a place where there's no water. Or it might even drop them in a place where there's no sun. So they, they make a lot so that so that at least one or two will drop in a good place to grow. So that's one way that seeds travel is by air or wind. Now I want you to look at these next two. This one is a coconut seed. And you can see that it's in something, right? That's a big hint as to the way it travels. That's a coconut, it, that's the kind of seed that grows a coconut palm. And then here's another one. This is a water lily seed. And what you can see is the seed pod and inside each of those little holes is a seed. And when the water lily seed, it, it acts as kind of a boat. So it would be like this, and you could see the seeds. So, and there's a 
keyword in there, water lily. So what do you think would be the way that these two type of seeds travel? You got it. That was a big hint, huh? They travel by water. Now, not all seeds that travel by water float. These two do. This seed pod floats and the coconut floats, but not all do. Some seeds fall off of plants that are growing by a river or a stream and the, the water in the stream or the river is flowing so fast that they don't really need to float. It can still take them down stream and they can find a different place to, to take root and to grow. But some do, like the coconut, it floats on the ocean and the ocean is such a big body of water that they, it might travel for a long ways before it finds some more land to grow on. So that is, these are two examples. There's many seeds that travel by water. These are two examples of seeds that travel by water. Now, I want you to look at these seeds. This is a burdock seed. Each of these little brown parts is a burdock, which is kind of considered a weed. These are acorns. Seen an acorn that grows an oak tree, and here's another one. These are cherry seeds, and remember we said that the seed is in the fruit or the flower. So this is open. You can see that cherry pit right in there, but then it has the fruit around the outside. So do you think these three seeds are the same or different? Okay, so they are different in that they look very different. This one has little pokies on it. This one has kind of a cap. And this one is a fruit. It has a pit inside. So they all look very different. That's why they're different. But the one way that they are the same is that they are dispersed or moved around by animals or people. Just like these ones on our poster that I said are moved around by people. They, they, they get sent to a store, people buy them, they take them home, and they plant them in their garden so that people move those around, right? Same way, but they do it in different ways. For instance, the cherry seed, so an animal might eat the seed and they don't know what, I mean, eat the cherry and they don't know what to do with the pit, so they just swallow it. Now, when we eat cherries, we spit them out, right? But the animals, the birds, or maybe a squirrel, or even a raccoon or some other animal that likes fruit might swallow it. And then when it comes out the other end, when they go to the bathroom, they might, they're probably a long ways away from where they ate it. So it's traveled around inside of them until it comes out. Now these, you know what these are. These are like little Velcro strips, right? They're little hooks, I don't know if you can see. But they're, they're what we call stickers. And why do we call them stickers? Because they stick to us. If you go walking down through the weeds, then you might come back and you have stickers all over your arms or your shoes, and then you take them off someplace else, and whoa, they've got to move to a different place to grow. So that's why we have to be careful when we take stickers off. Many times they are the seeds to weeds, and we don't really want them to grow. So if we just drop them on the driveway or some on the lawn somewhere, they'll, they're going, yay, someone moved us to a new place to grow. So try to put these off in the garbage. But if you don't, then they will, they, they have used you to move to a new place to grow. And they can also stick to the fur of animals like raccoons or skunks or any kind of animal that has fur on it. They will stick to them and then the animal might bite it off later, it falls off, and then it's found a new place to grow. So it travels by riding on the outside of people or animals. And this last one, you remember about squirrels, what they do in the fall is they dig holes in the dirt or else they might put acorns or seeds in a tree. And sometimes they either die because another animal eats them or they just forget where they buried their acorns. So when those acorns or the other seeds don't get bound and eaten by the squirrel, what happens to them? They grow. So they, they, the, the squirrels or the animals actually carry them to a different place to be planted. So those are all the different ways. Oh, th there's actually one more way that seeds grow and this is they do it themselves. So these are kind of cool. This is called, sometimes seeds have a seed pod. Like this is a laburnum seed, which is a type of a plant. 
and this is also, you've seen these, these are pea seeds and they have a pod. So some of these plants, they grow bigger and bigger, the little seeds inside grow bigger and bigger, and then they stop growing and it gets drier and drier and like this, do you see how dry it is? It almost looks like there's pea seeds in there because they're very similar. And then when it gets so dry, it explodes and it throws its seeds everywhere. So it's actually called self-dispersal or these seeds use, use themselves to travel and they are able to get around because they explode. The seed pods explode. That's kind of cool, huh? All right. So I wanted to show you how my seeds are growing. Still no progress on the flower seeds, but I have faith they're going to grow, I hope. But look at this bean seed. Look at how he's poking out of the dirt. He's doing pretty good, huh? I can't wait to see him. And I did one other thing so that we can see how they get roots. And I put a couple of our bean seeds. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I put it in. I should have got a different colored paper towel. So those are a couple of our bean seeds. And I just put them in there with a wet paper towel. And they will start sending out sprouts too. I just did this yesterday. So they, they haven't had time yet. But sometimes you can see how seeds grow this way because they don't really need um, soil to germinate. The soil is to give them nutrients later on and kind of give them a place to grow. But we're just going to let these sprout and then we can look at the roots and the stems later on when they've grown. So I just wanted to show you that I did that and what it looks like before they start to grow. And Oh, and I was also going to, it's time for me to water my seeds. So I'm just going to show you. I keep talking about only do it a little bit, not too much. So I'm just going to do a teeny bit of water. Boop. Just that much. Don't do more. Then it's going to be nice and wet. And it'll be good enough. And I'm going to do this bean seed. Just give it a little bit of water. A little, little bit. Because too much will flood it. Too little will be, well, then it will dry out. So just a little bit. Boop. See how that went? Just, just a little bit. It'll stay nice and damp. The, the dirt in there is called peat moss, and it does a really good job of holding in the moisture, so you don't need a whole bunch. All right, let's see. Did I do? Oh, oh. so the last thing I wanted to tell you is right after this video, then I have a link to a video on YouTube about the way that seeds travel. So if you want to learn more about that and see some different pictures, this is kind of a fun video. So after this one is over, then you can click on the next one and watch that video about how seeds travel.